happening today. First off, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here. Thank you for your uh, persistence and patience in the years of, of being a mother. Whether it's a, maybe a physical mother, maybe you were even, um, I'm on track, so I don't know. It's not for a first day. Okay, so but happy Mother's Day to everyone here because there's mothers who have been mothers to kids who maybe not even are their physical kids, but just kind of mentored them over the years. So happy Mother's Day to everyone who's watching us online and everyone who is in the pews. <coughs> also, we have, we have happening today is uh, Ella's first communion. We're going to bring her up in, a, in just a little bit here and uh, say a prayer for her. And uh, we're going to have that celebration of service as part of our communion. Now, normally, we uh, don't have a communion on the second Sunday of the month, but today, because we're celebrating Ella's first communion, we'll actually all be communing together, which is the way it should be as a congregation and part of the Koinonia Fellowship of our church. So, it'll be a little different. We will have communion today, but it'll still be kind of a less liturgical format. So, if you think a couple things might be missing, like the Curie or the Great Thanksgiving or some of the normal singing and stuff that we do as part of communion, just follow the bulletin. It's all good. And if your pastor can do it, then I know you'll get some more. All right. That's this Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to be having our confirmation ceremony for our three girls. We're looking forward to that with a couple of years of hard work they've had to put in. And so proud of them. And so that will be for, for Maddie, Gay, and Hannah for next Sunday. Oh, we got all kinds of stuff going on. Thanks to the uh, Sunday school kids and uh, the uh, confirmation kids who helped us with the planters. As you notice, they're so beautiful this morning. They put in hours of hard work yesterday. for getting those planters ready, and they look beautiful. So thanks, everyone, for your help with that. Can't hear. We got, we got, should I turn you off? We're having technical difficulties. Ah, <laughs> uh, those technical difficulties. Nothing? All right, well, go with what we got. Uh, so also speaking of flowers, we've got these beautiful flowers up front here, which uh, did Deb has helped with getting those. We've got one set of flowers, planters for Christine, and one for Ella for her first communion. Beautiful flowers, so that time of year, we'd love to see the pretty flowers out there. As you notice, we've got kind of a different slide format going on now. We've had some problems with people being able to read the, the verses and such on our screen. So we flipped it around. Instead of having a black format slide with white, we're going to try white with black, see how it goes. I know I'll get feedback from y'all, so just let, let me know how it goes. Thumbs up, thumbs down, and we'll adjust from there. <laughs> oh, let's see. Tomorrow, Hannah's Hands and Men of Faith will be meeting 9.30 girls downstairs, guys at Maple Manor Cafe. Also, I would like to have um, right during fellowship downstairs um, after the service today, all those who signed up or are interested, maybe didn't sign up, but are interested in part of being part of the steering and vision committee, looking at uh, what's this church going to be like a couple years down the road, uh, faith-wise, and what, what we want to make this church look like. We're going to be meeting downstairs for a quick, quick couple minutes just to decide on a date and time that uh, we can get together and move forward with that. That'll be this morning during the fellowship. Uh, let's see. You've probably noticed if you've gone downstairs before the service today that there's a rather large picture down there. Uh, it's a kind of classic picture of Jesus praying at Gethsemane. We received that as a gift from Spirit Lutheran. Some of you who attended First Lutheran for years probably remember that, that picture hanging at First Lutheran for many years. And we've been donated that picture as a gift. So the next step is, no, it's not going to stay We'll find a spot for it. So uh, we'll, we'll be discussing that over the next uh, week or two to see where it might be the best spot for that. But uh, thank you to Spirit Lutheran for giving us that gift of that picture. What else do I have here? I think that will do it for now. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Starting on June 2nd, the Sunday after uh, Memorial Weekend, We'll be starting a new sermon series, and I'm going to be going upon the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament as a time to build, a time to pray before all of that, and a time to move forward. So that will be for the summer on the book of Nehemiah. Now, at this time, I would like to call forward Christine. 
Because okay, just in case some of you may not know that Christine's last day of uh, teaching Sunday school and being our director of children's yes. ministry is going to be was well, next Sunday. She's putting in many years of service here for us, and we just thank her for, for your your awesome commitment to these kids. And every one of these kids who are here today, even the ones who are not, they they love you, and you just are a perfect example of what it means about relationships. Because she she got a lot of spiritual warfare. You folks don't hear it. She won't say it. But I'm telling you, she got a lot of it. There's a lot of people who come to her and say, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? But she was doing exactly what she was called to do at this church. And that is prepare these kids to be a part of the church. Not only the church here, but church outside. And that all starts with the relationship. And I am so proud of you. And I'm so thankful for you. Now there's like, going to be a gift and uh, downstairs and a card for her as well, but I just wanted all of you to remember this lady and everything she has done, so please, big hand! <laughs> Your turn, Ella! Go on. Like I said, we're going to do about... Uh, Christine was also part of giving this beautiful stole set up for her. Ella gets to celebrate her first communion today, where she gets to commune with the rest of us in sharing in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm so proud of her. The discussions I've had with her, she knows exactly what's going on. She probably could have taught her herself. So I am I'm proud of her. And the thing is, she's part of our congregation here. So it's her first communion, but it's going to be of her being a part of us. So. What I'd like for you to do right now is if you can extend your hands out towards her, we're going to say a prayer for her this time. Oh, Lord, we thank you for Ella. We thank you for all the children you have brought to us, Lord. And she's ready. She's ready to receive you, Lord, not only as the physical elements of, of bread and wine, but, Lord, into her heart as well. So, Lord, we're asking you to protect her from anything that the devil wants to mess with her on, Lord. And we just pray for and thank you for being a part of her life, Lord. And just infuse her with your spirit, Lord. Protect her from the evil one. And let it be a day of celebration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And as a gift from the church, we'd like to give you a devotional Bible. And specifically for teen girls, too. So she can grow into as time goes on to... It's the thing we do here at the church as part of the First Communion to present them with the Word of God because it's not, it's not just about the physical bread and wine. It's about the Word of God that is the bread of life. And so we have given that to her well as well. Okay, I think at this time we are ready to continue our worship. Caleb will bring us into the presence of the Lord with some beautiful music. I'm just asking you at this time just to open your hearts and minds to what God may have to say to you today through his music and through his holy word.
Our opening hymn for today is Great is Thy Faithfulness. We're going to be working out of the book of hymn today, number 771. Please rise as you are able. Yeah. 
loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a call to an ordained minister of Lutheran congregations and mission for Christ, and by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our next hymn is Word of God Come Down on Earth, still working out of the blue hymnal yet, number 716. Luke, who 
has been um, known as the author of the book of Acts. And the he that they're talking about is Paul, who is now Paul instead of Saul because he's witnessing primarily to Gentiles instead of um, the Hebrews named Saul with the Hebrews. So that, that change has come about. But when we landed at Miletus, he sent us a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet him. When they arrived, he declared, You know that from the day I set foot on the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And now I know that none of you to whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again. I declare today that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault, for I did not shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has anointed you as leaders. I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. <coughs> watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you night and day, and my many tears for you. And now I entrust you to God and the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all those he has set apart for himself. I have never coveted anyone's silver or gold or fine clothes. You know that these hands of mine have worked to supply my own needs and even the needs of those who are with me. And I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to receive, or, I'm sorry, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And now we get to share the reading of a beloved psalm, Psalm 23, and it's on page 225 in the green email. I will read the odd verses, and you get to read the even verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The second lesson is from the New Testament book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. And just prior to this, John had witnessed the extraordinary sights and sounds that were disclosed by the breaking of the first six seals. The seventh seal will be broken after this instant. And so John records, After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands, and they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. <coughs> And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. They sang, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the 24 elders asked me, Who are these who are clothed in white? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are the ones who died in the great 
great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. That is why they stand in front of God's throne and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will give them shelter. They will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the Lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Please rise as you are able to the gospel. Mm -hmm. Jesus does tell them, 
However, they do not listen. It's not really any different today. The Bible tells us who Jesus is over and over again. And Jesus still wants the world to hear his words and for everyone to understand who he is and what he can do for their lives. Jesus wants us to know that he is our shepherd and that we are his sheep. <clears throat> Jesus wants us to hear his words of peace and comfort for our lives. And Jesus wants us to follow his voice. So Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And one of the things Jesus is asking for us to understand from our gospel text is that we need to hear his voice and follow it in this world. However, all too often, we're so easily distracted in the rush of the modern world. It's not that we can't hear or understand the words of Jesus, but rather that we choose to hear what we want to hear. So we tune out Jesus and tune in instead to all of the psychobabble of the world. And so Jesus tells us, in verse 25, that the Jews heard him, however, they did not believe him. They saw his signs, but they didn't get the message. So, too, we have heard Jesus' words down through the centuries in the Bible that Jesus is the Christ and he is the risen Lord. We have seen Jesus worked through his Holy Spirit in the lives of countless people, and yet many still don't believe. In one sense, we have an advantage over the Jews of Jesus' time because we know and have the whole story. We have seen in the scripture these last three Sundays a powerful witness that indeed Jesus has been risen from the dead. So we should be able to trust in Jesus and follow him <coughs> to believe in his lordship for our lives with a greater conviction than the Jews who approached Jesus at the temple. Yet sadly, many people still doubt. And many people still do not trust Jesus as their savior. Many people today are still wandering aimlessly in their lives with no direction, no goal, and no idea of what to make with their lives. These people need a shepherd in their lives. They need a, a good shepherd who knows their every need and who will call them by name. These people need to know that that if they answer the call of the Good Shepherd, he will, will take care of them and give them guidance. If they would only, <coughs> only hear his voice. Here's a story of what it means to go through the journey of life. It's a bit of a long story, but, but it carries much truth within it. So I'm asking for your patience with this. There was a traveler was returning to his home to a from a distant country. At nightfall, he arrived at the entrance to a vast forest. Unable either to delay his journey or retrace his steps, he was prepared to just tramp <coughs> through the dark forest when he came upon an old shepherd. Now the traveler asks the old shepherd, how might be the best way to go through the forest? Alas, cries the shepherd, it's, it's not so easy to point out, for the forest is crisscrossed by many hundreds of paths winding in every direction. They are almost all similar in appearance, though all, with one exception, 
eventually leads to the great abyss. What is the great abyss? The traveler inquired. It is the abyss which surrounds the forest, replied the shepherd. Moreover, the forest is filled with robbers and wild beasts. In particular, it is ravaged by an enormous serpent, so that scarcely a day passes in which we do not find the remains of some unfortunate traveler who fell prey to it. And yet, the shepherd continued, I have stationed myself at the entrance of the forest to assist and direct travelers, and I am ready to guide you and accompany you if you so desire. The warm, caring, and, and confident appearance of the old man satisfied the traveler, so he accepted the proposal. Now the shepherd held a lantern out with one hand and with the other arm took the arm of the traveler. Then they set out upon their journey through the dark forest. And after many hours of traveling, they finally reached the farthest boundary of the forest without being troubled by any of the incidents that the shepherd had warned about. And it was only then that the traveler really understood and appreciated the magnitude of the service rendered him <coughs> by the shepherd. Because it was then, at the very edge of the forest, right before his feet, that the traveler saw a frightful precipice, at the bottom of which he could distinguish the roar of an angry river current. This, said his guide, is the great abyss which I spoke about. No one knows its depth, for it, was all, it is always covered with a thick fog which the eye cannot penetrate. As he spoke, the shepherd heaved a deep sigh, and he wiped a tear from his eye. The traveler asked, well, Why do you have such great sorrow? And his guide replied, How can I look at the abyss without thinking of the thousands of unfortunate people who every day are swallowed up in it. To each I have always offered my services. Very few accept them. And of those few, the greater portion, after journeying for just a few hours, accuse me of needlessly alarming them. So they despise my advice and set off on paths of their own choosing. The consequence, consequence is that they soon lose their way and are devoured by the serpent, murdered by robbers, or, or plunge headlong into the abyss. You see, there's only one narrow bridge by which the great abyss can be crossed. And the way which leads to the bridge is known only by me. But now you can see that the way that my way is the only way to pass safely to the other side. So, friend traveler, you may now pass over with confidence, continued the guide. The traveler, overcome with gratitude, thanked his charitable guide. He then crossed the narrow bridge and discovered he was now in his own land, and his family was there to welcome him. In our gospel text, Jesus says in verses 27 through 28, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Friends, do you hear the shepherd's voice? Will you listen to him and follow him? Do you remember a few years back the TV commercial for Verizon where this guy walks around to various places where a phone normally would not work? He goes out further and further away from the main connection and he just asks one question repeatedly. Can you hear me now? The commercial is trying to make a point about how well and how good the reception is for their phone service, and that you are never out of range for connection. 
God's also trying to connect with you today. God is asking, can you hear me now? And he tells us which way to go and what to do in our lives. And God says, be still and know that I am God. Can you hear me now? God says, I love you so much that I sent my son to give his life for you. Can you hear me now? God is asking us to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to listen to what he has to say. God does speak to us in many ways and all he is asking is, can you hear me now? Folks, can you hear God talking to you? Will you answer his call for you? Or will you decline to connect with him and do your own thing instead? <clears throat> Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Now there's two key words used here that Jesus uses about his followers. Listen and follow. Now the word listen comes from the Greek word akouo, which not only translates into listen, but more accurately means to listen properly with comprehension. Now that word follow comes from the Greek word akalutheo, which means to follow with obedience. The context of the word is of an apprentice who's walking alongside and learning from a master artisan. And both of these words are used to describe the great shepherd's sheep. Now you can ask any sheep rancher today and they will tell you that sheep are completely lost in their lives without a shepherd to guide them. And the same is true for the uh, people sheep of the world today. They also are completely lost in this world without a shepherd to guide them. So as followers of Jesus, we are told by the great shepherd that we are to listen and follow him so that we will not be devoured by the serpent and fall into the great abyss. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gracious gift of the forgiveness of all of our sins and the promise of eternal life with you in heaven that is through your son Jesus. Lord, we are sorry when instead of listening to you, we listen to the empty promises of this world. Father God, we choose right here and right now to follow you through the dark forests of life, knowing that you will guide us safely on our journey. Lord, Help us to spread the good news of the Good Shepherd who gave his life for us to all of the lost sheep of the world that we know. And it is in the holy name of your Son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Next hymn is On Eagle's Wings, still working out of the blue hymnal yet, number 779. <laughs>
uh, law enforcement personnel, fire department, ambulance drivers, even emergency room personnel. They're putting their lives on the line for us, Lord. So as a community, Father God, we need to constantly be praying for their safety, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Father, we also pray for those soldiers who are fighting on the front lines for your gospel truth. All those missionaries that we support individually and as a congregation, Lord, protect them, keep them safe. Protect their health, Lord, and the health of their families. Protect them from any kind of evil, whether it's a human evil or the darts of Satan. Lord, protect them on their travels. And Lord, please provide them with the resources they need to do those ministries you've called them to. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Lord God, we ask for your Jehovah Rapha to come down to all those who are in our minds and our hearts at this time that are in need of your healing touch. Everyone who might be, maybe just took summer cold or flu or an earache, Lord, all the way to people who maybe are looking at a stage four cancer. Lord God, send your Holy Spirit down right at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 Right. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they would like to make at this time, please go ahead and say them. Into your hands, O oh Lord. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share that peace of God with one another.
Kayla for her accomplishments. Yeah. We will not take our offering at this time. I thank you in advance for your grateful and gracious hearts. <clears throat> We proclaim the Lord's death until he returns again. Let us all pray together the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we celebrate a communion today by intention. We'll give you a wafer which you can dip into the wine. Also, we have white grape juice in the blue chalice. Uh, we're going to celebrate with the uh, Ella and the family first. We give them communion first. And after they return to their seat, then we will be distributing communion to everyone else. So, Ella and family, come on up. And while they are uh, gathering together here, Lamorne and I are going to commune with each other here first. Prepare our hearts and minds for the taking of communion.
to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.